Hey everyone, it's Jolt here. Today we're diving deep into the realm of creative constraints. Because you know, sometimes it's the limits we set for ourselves that spark the most genius ideas. Welcome to the world of the forcing function. But before we get started, I've got a major announcement. If you're as obsessed with PKM as I am, mark your calendars for the first European PKM Summit happening in Utrecht on March 22nd and 23rd. I'm stoked to be there alongside legends like Nick Milo, Nicole van der Hoven and Thiago Forte. Check the link in the description for all the details. Let's meet in person. Now let's zoom into what's happening in cohort 7 of the Visual Thinking Workshop. While we've been diving into The Practicing Stoic by Ward Farnsworth, I've also been polishing up my visual thinking framework. After weeks of tinkering, I crafted 32 cards, each a crucial piece of the visual PKM puzzle. These cards cover everything from reading techniques to storytelling methods, all designed to supercharge your visual thinking game. They are organized depending on their functions such as practices, methods, tools and checklists and competency domains like reading for understanding, summarization, drawing and visualization, reusability, storytelling and connecting and finding ideas. But let's shine a spotlight on the forcing function card for a sec. While it's not the central element of the framework, it's definitely a key component that demonstrates the power of constraint in simplifying complex ideas. As we explore this forcing function card further, you'll see how it promotes clarity and focus, helping us distill the essence of each concept and prioritize what truly matters. So let's dive deeper into the mechanics of the forcing function and discover how it can transform our approach to visual thinking and personal knowledge management. This idea has been marinating in my brain for over a year. Originally dubbed keynote ideas and concept on a page, it's the fusion of evergreen notes and permanent notes tailored for sharing ideas with others. When compared to Zettelkasten, this approach is less academic and more practical. These cards serve as my secret weapon for breaking down dense concepts into easily digestible visuals. The basic idea is to create visual concept cards that can quickly illustrate ideas and can be refined over time. These cards encapsulate core concepts and key takeaways using a mix of illustrations and text. As an example, I've applied this approach in creating the periodic table of productivity based on Ali Abdal's book, Feel Good Productivity. On the periodic table of productivity, I have 54 cards, each summarizing a feel good productivity experiment. As a more recent example, Stoicism is a relatively new topic for me, one that I'm still exploring. That's why in cohort 7 of the Visual Thinking Workshop, I decided to use the forcing function to summarize the key ideas presented in the book. Distilling those key concepts felt like mental heavy lifting, but these cards helped me map out the primary Stoic ideas creating my very own idea atlas about stoicism. I can now use this atlas as a sort of mental scaffolding to develop my understanding further. However, the concept of the forcing function is a new. Nicholas Luhmann used library note cards to manage his Zettelkasten system, albeit without those cards being visual. And here's where the forcing function comes into play. By using this approach, I can create cards that serve as portable knowledge repositories, facilitating discussions on various ideas and concepts. The combination of illustrations and text 
not only enhances understanding, but also fosters meaningful dialogues. As a quick side note, my key takeaway from The Extended Mind by Annie Murphy Paul is how external loops, such as discussing ideas with others, are essential in developing our thinking in any domain. The cards I create with the forcing function serve this purpose exceptionally well. So whether it's crafting the periodic table of productivity or summarizing stoic philosophy, the card forcing function empowers me to distill complex ideas into digestible visuals ready to spark conversation and illuminate minds. Let's now explore how this methodology can revolutionize our approach to PKM and visual thinking. But before we delve into the mechanics of the forcing function, I'm thrilled to announce cohort 8 of the visual thinking workshop commencing on April 6. In this transformative six-week workshop, we'll be creating a book on a page summary of Atomic Habits by James Clear, the bestseller book of 2023. Each session will cover key topics including summarization techniques, illustration methods, storytelling principles, and the art of visual storytelling. Check the link in the description to secure your spot today. At its core, the forcing function is a simple yet profound concept. Create a single visual card for each chapter or section of a book or any concept or idea you want to talk about. By imposing this constraint, we compel ourselves to distill the essence of complex ideas, forcing us to identify which concepts are truly essential and how best to visually represent them. This process is akin to mental weightlifting, requiring deep reflection on the author's ideas and making tough decisions about what matters most. In my practice, I often create multiple cards per chapter, exploring different angles and interpretations. However, in the end, I select just one or two cards that capture the essence of the chapter. But it doesn't stop there. On the back side of each card, I add additional notes and links to relate ideas in my PKM system, building a web of interconnected knowledge. However, while the forcing function is powerful on its own, it's not the only constraint we can impose. Timeboxing your thinking can be incredibly effective as well focusing our attention and ensuring results. Just think of how deadlines drive productivity. Setting a time constraint, such as the six-week time frame in our visual thinking course, focuses our attention and ensures we deliver results. Other constraints, such as limiting our color palette or word count, can also yield positive effects. By embracing these constraints, we enhance our ability to distill complex ideas and unlock new levels of creativity and productivity. So whether it's through the forcing function or other constraints, let's harness the power of limitation to fuel our journey of exploration, innovation, and growth. Together, we can transform the way we think learn and create. As we wrap up, let's reflect on the epic journey we've embarked on today. From forcing function to time boxing, we've seen how constraints can ignite creativity and supercharge productivity. But our journey doesn't end here. I want to remind you about the upcoming Visual Thinking Workshop, where we'll continue to explore these concepts and more. And don't forget the first European PKM Summit in Utrecht on March 22nd and 23rd. An amazing opportunity to connect with thought leaders and dive deeper into personal knowledge management. So let's embrace the constraints, 
break new ground and unlock our full potential together. Thanks for joining me on this exhilarating ride. Until next time, keep exploring, keep creating and keep innovating. Thank you.